Welcome to New York's number two sports show, the Rangers wave Nick Benino. So this was something that I didn't really expect to happen at this point, but very glad that it did. Benino, you know, in his 45 games at the Rangers this season, really struggled. Uh, you could argue that, you know, the first month or two that he was effective as a penalty killer and was, you know, pretty good on faceoffs, but really, really dropped off and just couldn't, you know, it was more of a detriment than anything. Uh, his minus 12 is the worst plus minus on the team. Um, you know, from all accounts, seems like a really, uh, you know, good veteran teammate has been around, has won Stanley Cups. Uh, you know, we'll see if someone claims him off waivers. It's possible for, you know, what he's done in his NHL career, but it's also possible that he clears waivers. And if he does, I don't necessarily know that he will go down to Hartford. Um, maybe. Uh, he has not played in the AHL in over a decade uh, when he came up with the Anaheim Ducks. So, I don't know. Chris Drury might just grant his release and, you know, he'll see what else is out there, but this is uh, a good move uh, by the Rangers because Benino uh, really did not add much of anything, uh, unfortunately. And like I said, like, the face-offs, like, 51%, like, which is, you know, good, but that needed to be even more of a strength. Like, whereas Vincent Trocek, this is the extreme, but Trocek is 62%, Brodzinski, 55.8. Um, you know, Zibanejad, 51.8. Like, Zibanejad's a little bit be better than Bino, which really shouldn't be either. Uh, Barkley Goodrow, 53.3. So, like, he, you know, amongst the current centers, like, his is the worst. So just in every way possible... Uh, it just wasn't working out with him. So out of all of sort of the bad players in the bottom six, he was probably the worst. And and his role was was in some ways more than it should have been. Like he ended up like on a line a lot of the time with like Will Cooley, which just wasn't what it should have been. Sometimes Blake Wheeler, like he, because really the more effective line is Goodrow centering VZ and Pitlick. Not that that's a great line. But that one, I think, can have more success a little bit. And, and so then Benino's kind of misplaced as, like, technically a third-line center, which right now, like, I guess Brodzinski's kind of in that role. In good news, Filipino is back practicing. He was in a red non-contact jersey. So, you know, I think, a, I don't know about a ways away, but um, maybe sometime after the All-Star break. So, you know, maybe Heedle's a few weeks away, which would be really good news. But... Um, we'll see what happens from here. This is, you know, realization at least by this Rangers, uh, you know, front office and coaching staff to know that, you know, you have to get rid of a, a well-respected veteran. Nick Benino played uh, under Peter Laviolette in Nashville. So this couldn't have been easy. And I wouldn't say, I mean, looking back on it now, the writing was on the wall. Benino was a healthy scratch against the Kings, but then he was back in the lineup for the next couple of games. And, you know, ironically, the icing on the cake was against his former team against the Sharks where, you know, he, he loses that face off and that leads to the tying goal. It just none of it was good. And it became very apparent, like he is kind of the worst of the bunch. But hey, this also for some of those other fringe players, it's like, look, if they can just get rid of him. You know, might they get rid of me? And, and there's not that many guys that are kind of in that scenario. Um like, someone that comes to another veteran is Blake Wheeler, but the thing with him is, is that I think a lot more bad would have to, like, he is on a little bit of a different level where that would be a little bit more jarring, I guess. But, like, hey, it, it, it proves to me that it's not out of the realms of possibility. I mean, both of those guys' contracts were right around the same, just one-year, very uh, minimum-type deals. So, uh, you know, look, players got to get going. Hopefully this shakes things up a little bit. I don't think it's really going to have that much of a difference in terms of the results, but it is the right, this was the right move and one in which I am happy was made because I thought that Nick Benito was someone that you wouldn't just easily get rid of at this point. I thought maybe they'd stick around with him just a little bit longer, but they cut bait and we'll see what happens. He will not be a ranger that much we know. I guess there's a chance, like I said, he could clear waivers and, and accept the assignment to Hartford, but I'm not even sure if that happens. And like I said, there's a chance that some other team might choose to claim him. 
off waivers. So, um, yeah, with two games before the All-Star break, the Rangers uh, get rid of a veteran and uh, a fourth-line center in Nick Benino. So we'll see what else Chris Drury has up his sleeve.